Hi guys, Fuzz here, welcome back to Final Fantasy VIII. And today we're going to be carrying on with the story, but there's a couple of bits I just want to explain to you before we do so, uh, including some cards that you might want to refine, etc, etc. As always, if you enjoy this episode, please don't forget to support me by hitting the like button and subscribing to my YouTube channel. So, I'm just outside Shimmy Village here because I popped in to have a look at the draw point, which I was able to draw 15 more Ultima from on selfie after about four attempts of reloading. I was getting about seven or eight uh, each turn and then I did it again and you know just randomly got 15 which was nice. So I've got a nice amount of Ultimas on Squall here. In fact he's maxed out at 100. I could also max out a second character at 100 as well but I'm just going to be keeping 85 on selfie for the time being so that she can continue to draw as and when we need be. Uh, right, that said, let's uh, move on to cards. And one card, make sure, by the way, before you do these refinements, that you have finished the Queen of Cards side quests, because we're going to be refining the Doom Train card and the Alexander card, both of which are needed for that quest. So we can get them back later, but I do recommend doing that before you go refining. As always, the rare cards, the boss cards and the Guardian Force cards can all be collected as many times as you want later on as long as you've done the CC group side quest which I did explain how to do in a couple of earlier videos so go back and check those out if you don't know what I'm talking about. So we're going to head over to Ability here and we'll go to Card Mod. And we're going to refine the Doom Train card. The uh, Alexander card into three moon curtains. And also we're going to refine the Bahamut card because that turns into 100 mega elixirs, which basically makes healing your party trivial from here on out, uh, right up until the end of the game and beyond. So I'm going to make sure that we don't have any mega elixirs in our inventory first. And if I do, we can sell them so that we don't, you know, uh, go or waste gill. Or whatever the case may be. Uh, but first of all we're going to refine the Doom Train card into three status cards. What a status card you ask. I will explain in a moment. And the Alexander card into three moon curtains. Same thing again. I'll explain what that is in just a tick. First of all I'm just going to sort out my inventory. For the sake of two Mega Elixirs. I'm not going to worry about those. We'll go ahead. And refine the Bahamut card. And there we go, we won't have to worry too much about healing our team. Right then, so now we've got status cards. What is it that we can do with those? So if we have a look at the Moonstone first of all, I think. Uh, Moon Curtain, I beg your pardon. It gives a Guardian Force the auto shell ability. Now your defensive character, the one that's using Doom Train, will already know that. But your strength character, which is likely Squall, and your magic character, whoever that is in my case, Selfie, uh, could basically do with getting one of these items on one of their Guardian Forces. So make sure you have enough Amnesia Greens in case you need to unlearn anything. Remember, each character only needs one Guardian Force with the magic GF item and draw commands so you can actually get rid of those on your other guardian forces that a character has equipped in order to make room for new items now or new abilities rather and the other item that we just collected was the status guard and that gives the incredibly coveted status defense times four ability although it's likely only your strength character that's going to need that in my case squall at the moment he has no way uh, to have any kind of defensive magics equipped. So I'm going to go and teach this to Cactuar. I've already removed an ability from him to make space for that. And if we go to Squall here, he can now equip for defensive magics. Very, very nice indeed. As in status magics. Look at that. Throw Suna on straight away. We could even put Pain on as well, although we've had to remove that from something, but it's good to boost up his uh, stuff. Confuse is always something good to guard against. So just some stuff to bear in mind there. But that's pretty much all I want to show you in terms of the good old um, junctioning and card modding for the time being. 
So let's carry on with the story. And we're going to begin today by heading over to Adia's house. The other thing I've just done as well is use the Rosetta Stone that we collected from Estar from Cheryl's shop. If you remember back in the Estar episodes. And I've given that to Shiva so that Squall can now equip four abilities. And for the time being, Squall is basically using all of the bonus abilities uh, before I actually enter battle. I will, of course, swap out Encounter on for one of the others, such as, well, Spirit Bonus, which is Magic or Defense. The only bonus ability I wouldn't worry too much or prioritize at all is Hit Point Bonus. And the reason for that is that by higher levels, it's really easy to max your character's health out at 9999 anyhow, just by equipping some, equipping some strong magic to it. So, you know, don't use a slot here for hit point bonus, it's just not worth it. But try and make sure you use the other bonuses if you can. Obviously, on your strength character, you're going to want strength bonus so that you get extra stats to strength as you level up and magic for your magic character, and then the defensive bonuses on your defensive character. Kind of makes sense, right? As far as Rosetta go, Stones go, because they are quite rare, you only need two, because Bahamut, who goes to your magic character, in my case, Selfie, already has ability times four in his arsenal, and uh, so you just need two for your defensive and strength characters. So you get one quite easily from Cheryl's shop, and then the second one you can get quite easily from the final dungeon of the game on disc 4, which I will show you when we get there how to get that. You can also get one by refining down Poo Poo's card, or Pew Pew's card, whatever his name is, which we did collect in the last episode. But Pew Pew's card is a one-time item, so I don't recommend getting rid of that, even for a coveted Rosetta Stone. So here we are outside Adia's house, and without any further ado, we're going to head on straight inside. And we can see that Angelo is here waiting for us. And we're going to follow him for a scene.
So we have our next mission set up now. And that's quite a lengthy scene that we had to witness there. It would have been nice, in my opinion, to have had some music through it. So when you're ready, we can basically head towards the exit for another brief scene. Doesn't look like Squall was interested in responding to Adia's little uh, exposition there. But we're going to head now over to Esther, which is the next part of the story. So there we go. Esther Air Station is where we want to head to since we can land directly on the air station. Oh, I do like the Ragnarok. One thing I do miss about the newer Final Fantasy games is that you don't get the traditional world map anymore. And the traditional airship either. Make sure we actually line up correctly with the air station before we attempt to land. And if you don't have encounter non-equipped, then you should bear in mind that there will be enemy encounters here in this section. Say hello to some folks. Poor man's been traumatised. Oh, I do always get confused trying to figure my way around the city here. But we're basically heading for the Presidential Palace. So I believe the Presidential Palace is this way. I don't know if this is the most efficient way to get there. But I don't think it will be far off. And if we head to the other side of the screen here, then we can just head north at this section. We've got the Blizzard draw point, but I doubt that's of any use to anybody anymore by this stage of the game. And we're going to select that we do wish to enter the palace. Right, so normally when we enter this area we do head on into the waiting room, but we're just going to continue on past now. And then down this bridge slash tunnel hallway thingy. Where we can see these guards are here waiting for us, and apparently the president is waiting. So without any further ado, we'll head on inside. And look, it's Ward and Kiros. And no mistake in who the chap is at the back waving his arms around. Of course, it's going to be Laguna. So, approach them and another scene will kick off. Thank you. 
We can ask some optional questions now if you want to, and you'll get some backstory from them by asking. For example, where's alone? When you're ready, the one option we do need to select is to ask Laguna to explain the mission to destroy Ultima Sea, which is of course why we've been summoned here in the first place. And here comes Dr. Od.
And if this all sounds hugely confusing to you, then don't worry, it pretty much is. So the general gist is we're going to be going to the Lunatic Pandora in order to rescue alone first and foremost. But then the plan is to take out the sorceress Adel, Adele. And then we're going to be doing some weird stuff with Rinoa and Delode in order to uh, get Rinoa possessed by Ultimacia, which will have something to do with travelling through time, and then eventually we'll be able to take out Ultimacia herself. Uh, something like that anyway. So hopefully it will all start to make more sense as we actually make our way through. To proceed, we'll need to select yes. I think I'm probably going to call this episode the exposition episode because that's pretty much what it's been, hasn't it? So we're now going to be getting control of Squall once more, and it looks like Paul Laguna still gets his cramps. No changes there. So the next thing we need to do in terms of the story here is to fly over to the Lunatic Pandora. But we're going to do that in the next episode. The last thing we're going to do here today is first of all save our game. And the reason we're going to save our game is because there's a card battle for us to undertake. So we're going to head back aboard the Rag uh, Narok here. I keep saying Ragnaros. I've been playing too much World of Warcraft, haven't I? And we're going to head back to the cabin. And we can actually play Laguna at cards. And the reason we want to do this is because he actually carries Squall's card. So we could do a lot worse than winning that in all honesty. And it actually refines into some pretty decent stuff as well. Hence the reason why I do recommend playing him at this point. Could really do with the open rule but not to worry. So there's the squall card. And there is no way to know what the opponent's carrying. Although it's not exactly fair, the opponent pretty much always has access to the all rule. So it doesn't look like we're going to win this game, sadly.
Hopefully it looks like I should win it on this turn then. We can see the score cards being played. It doesn't play it every time, sadly. So one of the reasons I recommend you get the score card, you can play it in battle if you want, but you can also refine it, <coughs> excuse me, into three, three stars, okay? So three times three stars, hopefully that makes sense. And the three stars can either be refined into 100 triple each, which means you could get 300 from refining that score card if you still need triple. Or you can use the three stars, A3 stars, to teach expend X3-1 to one of your guardian forces. And so you can have three of those because there's three three stars from that card. And what that ability would do is basically make a uh, magic spell cast with triple just use one magic from your stock which you know can be useful i guess but i'm not going to be too fussed about that since i don't often use triple magic all that much if i'm going to be brutally honest with you but you may do you may do who am i to tell you how to play hey eh? so that might be useful to you and don't forget you can always get the school card back a little bit later on on this four anyway along with all the other rare cards that you have been refining. But that's going to bring us to the end of today's episode, I think. And we're going to pick up next time by going to the Lunatic Pandora and seeing if we can rescue alone and taking care of this sorcerer's business. So thanks for joining me, guys, and I'll see you soon for more Final Fantasy VIII. Bye for now.